Hi, guys. Uh, I want to come out and just uh, tell you right here at the top that I'm a gay person. I'm a homo-American. That's how George W. Bush might have put it. I appreciate the homo-Americans out there. God bless you all to death. I, uh, so yes, I'm gay, so sorry, ladies, and you're welcome, fellas. I have, to, I have to come out and say that because I don't necessarily seem gay, so I have to make it known to people. Uh, that's the way I, wear, I dress like a dandy rainbow here. <laughs> because if I was like in a supermarket checkout aisle, I wouldn't necessarily scan gay, like beep gay, beep gay. They get to me, it's like, oh, well, let's we'll just manually key it in. <laughs> uh, I, I should ask, is anybody else here gay tonight? Any other gay people in the house? No, wow, that's a lot of you. <laughs> All right, don't worry, I am strong enough to fight my way out of here <laughs> if I have to. And I have two exits to choose from. Let's play the game, shall we? <laughs> maybe I should ask, is anybody here in the closet? Um, <laughs> maybe that would help. I call it, it sounds like a couple, that's good. That's very courageous of you in these times to be openly in the closet. Uh, but that, I'm not, I don't have to be in the closet anymore. I am openly um, hmm, fabulous and wonderful. Uh, but there was a time when everybody was apparently in the closet. They didn't even have a word for gay. They invented that in like the 20s. There used to be like, you would just have a euphemism or a code word like, oh, he's just a gentleman of a certain persuasion. If you, <laughs> if you catch my meaning. Oh, you know, a cobblestone fellow, a bit of a satin sheet sort of boy. He's a lad with a long handshake, if I may. <laughs> That's how they uh, show any gay villain in any movie at all. When they have to show, they can't, like, a lot of villains are gay, but they can't just come out and say, like, hey, the bad guy's a faggot, watch out for him. They have to hint at it that way. Like, here's my perfumed calling card. Mm -hmm. Or any Vincent Price movie at all, any of them at all, where he's like, welcome to my chamber of secrets. I'm here in my bed clothes. <laughs> this is my curious associate, Raul. <laughs> Our relationship need not be specified. <laughs> Raul, fetch the murdering slippers. <laughs> I don't know why I love the archetype of the gay villain. That's why I consciously dress like one, with my thin mustache, which tells you, hmm, something must be a foul. <laughs> There's facial grooming involved. <laughs> uh, if you know, if you know uh, the gummy bears on the Disney afternoon, you know that gay villains start for kids at a very young age. The bad guy in the gummy bears was this guy, Duke Igthorn, with body-fitting gray chain mail, which was really big in the Middle Ages, uh, cartoon land. He has the mustache, and he's always screaming and singing at the same time. Bring me those gummy bears. I want them for the gummy berry juices. I'm a gay villain. I won't get them myself. I left for muscle tone, not strength. Bring them to me. Or then, of course, all the Decepticons in Transformers, all of them, just screaming at each other. Megatron, shut up, star scream. <laughs> That's literally the character's name. It couldn't be any more obvious. It's like the dads of the world got together and were like, all right, all right, the good guy robots, they'll sound like baseball players. The bad guy robots, they sound like faggots. Dads are done. That's all we need to do. Why aren't we just saving the Autobots? Can it, you power bottom? <laughs> Megatron sounds like a grand dame drag queen who's putting on her wig backstage, about to go on. Like, watch and learn, or you'll never work at Club Cybertron again. <laughs> Am I on? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm a robot in disguise. <laughs> Shut it, bitch. There are, there are endless examples of gay villains. I love all of them. In the Jungle Book, there is Ka the Python, who's like lisping for no reason at all. Look at this delicious man cub. And I'm like, hold on, Mowgli got lost in the jungle. He didn't wander into the Hollywood squares. <laughs> That's unnecessary. 
Uh, one of my favorite ones is the Riddler in Batman. He's awesome. He has a masquerade ball mask, an entourage of people dressed like him, and a giant question mark on his torso. <laughs> What's the biggest question about a man, Batman? Hmm? Squiggle, squiggle, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Riddle me this. What has two heads in the morning, two knees for lunch, and a big load of cum for dinner? A blowjob, boy wonder. <laughs> but he's not just boy characters. There, there's also girl characters, because girls aren't supposed to be gay either, and we have to teach that to them when they're young. Uh, if you remember The Little Mermaid, she, there is perhaps the best gay villain of all time, Ursula the Sea Witch. <laughs> I'm a big, fat, brassy dyke with a butch haircut. Ew! <laughs> I have two big swinging titties and no babies on them. Gross! <laughs> Those poor, unfortunate souls who have to have sex with me, am I right, ladies? And I'm like, no. Oh. Every time I meet a woman like that in my real life, she has been awesome. That is a woman who goes, you know what? The bar is closed, but I tell you what, lock the doors, one round on me. <laughs> I got eight tentacles coming out of my pussy, but I got eight beer taps. We're all getting fucked up tonight. If you don't lose your voice when you party with Ursula, then you don't know how to party, Ariel. <laughs> You guys have been great. Thank you so much. I was bullied when I was a little kid. I was bullied when I was in school for being Asian American. Uh, the biggest problem with that is that I am not Asian American. <laughs> so I'm married also. I'm married to somebody from another ethnicity. I'm married to an Indian woman. Indian, actually. Um, yeah, in, not Indian like, woo, but Indian like, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 